You okay? First of all, my name is Luis Morales. I do not work for HISD. So if you ask me any internal questions, I don't know. Um, you have software portal questions. Uh, Ms. Hurst uh, will know, or, or Pops? Is that what they call her, Pops? Pops will know. Um, uh, so I, I don't know those. I'm going to talk to you about what's here, what's new. Any questions so far before we begin? Everybody good? Yeah? All right, so before we begin, um, you have hardware, right? What's hardware? Anybody know what hardware is? It's the actual stuff you can touch, right? So we have new hardware. In this case, we have a projector, you have the dry erase board, you have a document camera, and you got a mic. Okay, not the mic I'm wearing on my pants, but another mic over here. Okay? All right. Within that, this is just a projector, right? So it's, we're using smart software, but this is not a smart board. Does that make sense? So what happens is we got a projector and they partner with smart, so they're allowed to use their software, and so they're working together on it. So we have two different parts. Okay, so to begin with, that is your Epson projector. Your Epson projector has a remote. When you power it on, please, your, please use your remote. Even if you're tall enough to reach out there and press power, which I am, do not do that because you're going to throw it off alignment. You with me there? All right, so use your remote. Power's on and power's off with two clicks of the power button. Um, questions so far? Okay. The most important part that you don't want to touch you don't want to touch is this part right here. That is your light curtain. Okay, the light curtain is what gives you touch. Okay, so when I say light curtain, visualize a waterfall. You see a waterfall, what happens when you put your finger in the waterfall? Yeah, the water breaks, right? That's what you're doing when you're putting your finger in here, is the water breaks, okay, or the light breaks. That's how you create your touch. Any questions there? So if you start messing with this, you're not going to have any touch. You with me there? Okay. The next thing you have is you have a stylus. You're actually going to have two stylus or styli or styluses, whatever it's called in plural form. All right, you have two styli. The styli are going to be charged. So these are battery operated. They're going to give you a plastic cover that will be magnetically attached to the board and you can leave them there. But they are charging. So if when you get a chance, the charger's over there plugged in, charge these here. Are you going to use these all the time? It just depends on what your preference is. Do you rather use a stylus or would you rather use your finger? It doesn't matter but you can use both at the same time. Questions there? Anybody there? Everybody good? Okay, so before we jump into the software, let's talk about everything that we have. We said we have, a, we have a, an Epson projector, an Epson interactive projector, we have the light curtain, you have a brand new dry erase board, but you also have the uh, mic. You have a mic here, okay? Has everybody seen this in your classroom already? No, so this is a microphone, it is not a shock collar. Okay, so this one turns on here, press on, test, 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 test. One of these will work, I don't know which one's mute, in or out. Test, test, there you go. So this one goes on your neck. So this one goes here, you put it on, and you're going to hear the sound. You have four speakers, you got two in the front, and you got two in the back. Okay, so that way you don't have to be loud or sometimes when you talk loud you get fatigue at the end of the day. So you can just use your regular voice. In this case, I'm going to take it off just because I do have a loud voice. Okay, any questions there? Yes? It turns on automatically. Everything's already, yeah, ready to go. Yeah, you don't need to click into anything. Right, so you put it on here. Um, the button that you saw me pressing was the mute button. I didn't remember if I had it on mute or not before, so you press the button, and then you're going to go on to mute. You press the button again, and you're going to unmute. Okay, so if you're going to talk to a student privately, mute your mic, and then, move, and then move on. Okay? Other than that, I'll get you right now. Other than that, your charging port is right here. This is your charging port for your sound, okay? Now, 
it turns on and off here. Your volume controls looks like the box is here. Now we are in a science classroom, so it doesn't look like everybody's classroom, but everything that you see here will be in your classroom on a podium, I believe. Well, there's a podium in your classroom that everything's gonna be on there. The sound system is here. Do not mess with the icons. The only thing I would say is move, um, you'll see you have button A, button B to change the volume controls there. Other than that, just you don't have to touch anything else. The blue box right, the blue box, is, that, is it blue? Yes, the blue box on the side with the white cover. Um, this also has an aux in. Why would you need an aux in? Anybody? Why do you need an aux in? Run other sound devices. You can run other sound devices, right? So if you want to put music on there, you can just get an auxiliary. The headphone jack that goes into your phone, where well, you would need a male male. One into your phone, one into here. Does that make sense? And then you can play music through here and you get music through the four speakers there. Again, there's nothing you got to do extra in there, just plug it in, okay? Questions there so far? No? We good? All right. What about document camera? How many of you guys use your docu document camera? Yeah? Use it a lot? Okay. So, let's talk about the document camera. Document camera is connected via VGA. Everybody knows what a VGA is, right? Yeah? In the morning, they were saying they were the one you go like this and you, and you screw it in. Um, so it's the blue, and most of the time it's a, it's a blue cover, you put it in, it's uh, the big thick rectangular one, that's your VGA. So it should be connected via VGA and it should be connected via USB, okay? What we're trying to do is get you away from the document camera, okay? We're trying to move you away from the document camera. So in this case, if you're used to using it as a VGA, which is totally fine, it'll look something like this. It's going to switch inputs to your VGA, right? And the VGA should come up here shortly, there it is, right? So when you switch inputs, do you still have access to your computer? No, right? Okay, so watch me here. If, it's, if this light on is on, if that light is on, you're on VGA. You with me there? If this light is on, you're on computer mode. You're right, see the laptop and then the, the, the program there? So let's go back to when we were kids. When we were kids, and I think everybody's about the same age here, when we were kids and you had their TV and you were still watching VCRs, what did you have to do to watch the VCR? What's that? Not change the cable back in the day. You had the auxiliary or the coaxial that went in the back. So what did the TV have to be on? Channel three. Had to be on channel three, right? So in the original days, you had to put the TV on channel three, turn the knob or put it on channel three, and then you could watch VCR. Then the DVD came out. What happened then? You couldn't, you couldn't watch it on channel three anymore. You had to do what? Tell the input, right? That's what you're doing. You're changing the input when you're doing this. So keep that in mind. If you're here, you don't have computer. Okay, and, that's, and so what we're trying to use is to use them both together, integrate them seamlessly. So knowing that we're gonna be on the computer mode when you first connect your computer and you turn everything on, your document camera will try to overwrite the computer and go straight to VGA and go here. So just go to your, to go to your document camera and press the laptop icon and you should be okay. Okay, now it's gonna go to your, it's gonna switch sources or the input like we talked about. And then now when you open up the software, and I'll show you how to do this in a little bit. When you open up the software, you press the document camera icon and you have your document camera there, okay? The difference is that now it's here, and so now I can write on my document camera. See how that works? So you can still write on your images, so everything you were doing here, you can still do over here. So then somebody says, well, it's actually bigger if I do VGA. That's fine, it's true. See the little camera icon there? Everybody see it? If I click on that camera icon, you take a screenshot of it, and if you take a screenshot, you can actually make it as big as you want or as small as you want, and then work on it from there. Questions, comments, concerns there? Everybody good? You guys just came back from lunch, you guys ate too much, you guys are dead. The morning group was lively and laughing and we're just like, really, we good? All right, sounds good. All right, so everybody understands that concept, okay? So the goal here again is to try to, to get us to move away from the document camera and slide over this way and work interactively with the board here. C or no? C means yes. Yes, we good? Yes, sir. 
Show you how to take that screenshot? Yes. So if you're here, how do you open the document camera? Hit document camera, right? And then here you're going to have the screenshot there. That's the icon. Um, you have a time lapse. So if you're a science teacher and you want to do a, a video of, the, of an experiment, it'll time lapse whatever is reactions going on there. Um, and then you can zoom in and zoom out there with all your controls. So to, it, to do that, it would be here. And just click on that one. And for some reason, my finger's not working on it. So I just click on it there with my computer. And that should do the screenshot there. Got it? All right. Can you blow up your Take fingers and blow up? Yes. Yeah, okay. All right, so it has gestures. Okay, so what are gestures? Okay. What are gestures, guys? Anybody? Gestures. Not your morning traffic gestures, but the gestures you use with computers. Right? You're using your hands, right? So if you're using your phone, you want to make a bigger image, you just get your fingers and you go like this, or you shrink and you go like this, right? Same thing here, but I wouldn't recommend using your fingers like this because they're actually pretty close to each other. So just get two fingers and extend it out like this if you want to do that. See or no? Yes. Yes? Okay. All right. I'm going to close that. And I'm going to close all the other ones. All right. So who has never used a smart board before? Who has never used one? Okay. All right. So you guys know how to use your computers? Yes, right? You know how to use your computers. So when you see this, what are you actually looking at? Desktop. You're looking at your desktop, right? You're actually looking at your desktop. So if I want to open up the internet, how would I do it on my computer? Talk to me. Talk to me. Yeah, you click on Google Chrome, right? But it's not just a click. If I do it here, how many times do I click? Twice. If I do it here, how many times? Once, right? Everybody see the difference there? So what we're going to... No? So what we're going to do is we're going to transition from a click to a touch. You with me there? So as we're, doing through as, we're, as we're going through today, and you've never used them before, every time you say the word click, we're going we're gonna to try to replace that word with the word touch. All right? So if I want to open, open up Google Chrome, I double touch it or double tap it, right? So there it is. So if you know how to use your computer, you already know how to use a smart board, right? Because it's all the same thing. You got your name? Yes. Anybody have a favorite website? Hmm? Website? What's a good website you guys use all the time? And don't say target.com. Huh? So which website? Website. Um, Anybody? YouTube. YouTube. Is, it, is it blocked? No. And it's not blocked here? No, not everything. Not everything? So if I go to YouTube, it's not going to block me? No. Okay. All right. So you have a you have a keyboard on your computer. All right. There's my keyboard. So how do I go to YouTube? Talk to me like a five-year-old. How do I go to YouTube? You click on your URL bar, your search bar, whatever you want to call it, and then you type it. Right. So you would say YouTube. Oops. Did I spell it right? And then dot com. There you go. Yep. And then enter, and that'll take you to YouTube. With me there? Okay. A little trick, if you double click on top here on the bar, it'll, it'll maximize the screen. I say that? Yeah. If you double tap the top bar, it'll maximize the screen. All right. So there's YouTube. Okay. All right. So if I want to scroll down, how do I do it? On your computer. Yeah. You got to go here, right? On your computer. But on the smart board, and this, kind, this little guy right here, just move it out of the way. On your smart board, you're just going to use your finger and you're going to go up and down. Okay? So you should be okay. Just like your phone or your tablet, it's the exact same thing. Okay? All right. Any questions there? Say that again. Yeah, it should. Um, um, let me do, if it says Disney, I'm going to put Disney. Is it coming out of the speaker? Or is it coming out of here? Is it? There you go. All right. 
Any questions, comments there? Are everybody good? All right, so the basics is if you know how to use your computer, then you know how to use this already, okay? All right, anybody, everybody comfortable now? You good? If you ever touch one, are you gonna turn it on? Yes, right, yes. All right, if you've never touched one, you go back to your classroom, you know, turn it on, play with it, don't be afraid of it, let's just, let's just get going with it, okay? All right, um, anything else, any questions, concerns, don't be shy, this is the time. I'm only here for a day, yes? Can you make it wider? But this one seems wider than the one I have in my room. Like it's a widescreen or something. Um, with regards to the actual image? Yeah, the display. Um, you can make it wider, but we, um, so the installers would have to do it. Okay. Okay. So I would ask them if they can make it a little bit wider, because um, they have to move the projector. So the projector just goes out a little bit more. Right. So I don't know if they did the same measurements for all. Okay. All right. So I would just, um, if it looks a lot smaller, then I, I would ask them, say, can you make my screen wider, and then they'll move it for you. Mine's okay. just more square. But I, I can live Yours is more square. I think so. Well, then try to work with the. Um, yeah, the aspect ratio, uh, 16 by 9, 16 by 10, and do that, see, see if that helps you, okay? Because they try to do them all standard, okay? Can you guys see okay over here? I know I'm giving you guys my back a lot over here. You guys good? All right, so to begin, okay, those of us that have never used a smart board, you obviously know how to use a dry erase board, right? So a dry erase board, when you go to a dry erase board, what do you see? Blank. You see white, right? You see blank. What else do you see on the dry erase board? Pens, right? You have the markers. You have the markers. So in this case, um, and we're not, we're not there yet, but I'm just going to show you real quick. When you open up the software, you're going to get that white screen, okay? If this comes out at you, it's just telling you you have 45 days remaining, just go ahead and press OK. Do not press anything else, okay? So when it opens up, you're going to see the white screen, okay? When this comes up, it's just like Microsoft. Do you want to open up a recent one? Do you want to see some examples? I normally just press close, okay? So this is your white space. So it does look something like that. And so it looks just like your dry erase board. See or no? Yep. The only difference is that instead of having markers here, you got to tell your finger when to write or you got to tell the stylus when to write. You with me there? So when we get through the tools, you're going to know that that's your pen and I can just come up here and I can write. Okay? And it's multi-touch so you can have up to two people at the same time. You can also get the stylus here and you pick a color and you can write. You can write on them together. See how that works? Okay, so use both of them. Use it like a dry erase board. It's okay. Okay. Um, Quest is up to here. Those of you that have the software downloaded, how many of you guys already downloaded the software? And then have you opened it? What's what's that? Okay. Okay. So here we go. Here we go. If you if you already downloaded the software. If you already downloaded the software, we're going to go ahead and open it, okay? For those of you that haven't downloaded the software, the software we're looking for is Smart Notebook. It looks like that. So as a beginning teacher, as a beginning teacher with the Smart Board, and not a beginning teacher in content, but a beginning teacher in Smart Board, I would come up here, I would look for the Smart Icons. In this case, it's Smart Notebook 18, okay? I'm going to come up to Smart Notebook 18, and I'm going to double click, right? And it'll take you a while to get used to the click. All right, so you're going to double click and it's going to open up. If you can do that, you can use it. You with me there? Okay. So now, when you start using it, you have your icons up here, but you're probably going to start getting used to using the icons down here. Okay. When you start using the icons down here, it gets a little bit better because I can just switch from one to the other from down here instead of having to minimize and then go find my page. Does that make sense? Everybody good? Okay. All right. So now, we're going to go over the tools, okay? Let me move this over here. We're going to go over the tools, okay? So the first thing you see is you should see these tabs right here, and you're going to see these tabs right here, okay? We're going to go over the tools first. So how many of you guys have your software open? Okay? All right, so if you have the software open, we're going to go over this here. If you're taking notes, write this down. To modify your, your, to modify your toolbar, we're going to click on the cog here. So click on the cog and we're going to edit your toolbar. If you already have the software open, we need to add these four tools to your toolbar. Okay? 
If you have your software open, we're going to add these four tools to your toolbar. How do you add the tools? You click them and you drag them. Okay? When I say click them, this is very important. We're used to being in a mouse and we're used to double clicking to grab something or we're used to clicking and then right clicking and doing all kinds of shortcuts. When I say click and drag, I mean use your right finger or whatever finger you have, click and drag. All right, so it's a click and drag, okay? If you have the mouse pad, you might want to click with your thumb and then move with your finger or use one finger to click and then drag over there. But don't double click, don't double tap the mouse pad because it's going to throw you off and then you're going to get frustrated in this uh, cable here. It's going to frustrate you, so just try to click and drag to make it easier for you, okay? Does that make sense? Remember, we're trying to grab an object, so you click and drag, okay? So, we're going to click and drag. The first one we're going to click and drag is your smart document camera, because it's on mine, but not on yours. So you would click and drag up, okay? So you would click and drag up to that space. That's not highlighted, so please don't drop it there, because it ain't going to work. That's highlighted, so drop it into the highlighted area. Is everybody doing it? So the first icon, well, if you don't have a computer, I know you're not doing it. So if you don't have a computer, write these down. The first one we need to add to our toolbar is the smart document camera. Okay, everybody got it? Smart document camera is going to give you access to your document camera. The next one we need to add on there is called reset page. Okay, reset page. Reset page, it looks like this here. Reset page. What that's going to do is that when you create your content, when you create your lessons, if you have a student come up here and play with it, or even if you do an example, you can press reset page and it'll go back to the beginning without you having to close and open again or do undo undo. It'll just reset the page to the original format that you last saved it to. Questions there? So how do you answer the uh, Click on the cog right there. You got it? Okay. All right. So we have smart document camera. We have reset page. What was the other one? You need the smart recorder. The smart recorder records video. So we're going we're gonna to show, show you how to do that one. So you need the smart recorder, please. You need the smart recorder. And, oh. Everybody got it? What's that? And the screen capture, yes. The screen capture. We need the screen capture. All right, screen capture. It says screen capture and it looks like a digital camera. Okay? Everybody got it? So if you don't have your computer on, you'd have it going, write those down because those are going to, you're going to, I think you're going to use those most often. Okay? And I'm saying that from experience. Okay? Everybody good? Can I go on? Oh, you're putting the, you put a clothesline on me, man. All right, thank you. All right, here we go. From the beginning, okay? From the beginning. I'm gonna click on my screen capture, and I'll show you how to use it later, but for right now, let's just do that. I'm gonna click on my screen capture, and we're gonna go over these basic tools, okay? So the first tool that we're gonna talk about is this right here. What does that mean? Back, that one, that one, undo and that one, redo or undo the undo, that one. So it's a blank page with a plus and that means add a page and this one, delete a page. What about that one? Open a file. You're really never going to use that. I mean, I never use it. Nobody would just go open. Uh, that one, your kids has probably never seen a floppy disk, but tell them that's save. What does that one mean? Delete, right? The morning group said close. That means delete. Okay? Who said close? Why did you say close? I said close. Why? There's a reason as to why you said close. Why did you say close? Because we use it most of the time to the apps. See what she said? Most of the time we use a red X to close the apps. Remember the, not this Windows, but the Windows about, you know, maybe Windows 8, Windows 7? What color was the X? When you, were, when you were close the program, what color was the X? It wasn't red. It was white. But it had a red background. So it appeared to be red. So like, close the red X. I'm like, uh, the X is white. So when people look at this X, they, 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 uh, 
relate to that and they think that one's closed. So if you see somebody going like this trying to close it, don't laugh at them. Okay? But notice what happens when I touch this. Right now it's not highlighted. I touch it and it highlights. I, I untouch that and it goes back to being gray. So this one means delete. I want to bring that back. So what do I do? Undo. Undo. Alright, see how that works? What do you think that one is? Screen shade. What does the screen shade do for me? It allows you to block the, some of the screen if you don't want the students to see everything. Were you here this morning or you already, have you already used it? Or you just GT? No, I already used it. You already used it? Already All right. Sounds good. All right. So screen shade. If I click on the screen shade, it's going to cover my content. Okay. So how many of us, when we first started teaching, used an overhead projector with transparencies? Did anybody use it? You did? You did use the transparencies, right? All right. So what was the best part about using an overhead transparency? I never used it. That's what, from what I hear. You didn't raise your hand that you used it. You used it? That's right. <laughs> so you put a paper on top of your transparency. And what did that paper do for you? It allowed you to cover up your content, right? right? It allowed you to cover up your content. But it still didn't cover your mistakes. How, how would you erase on the transparency? With water. Don't say it on water. You don't have to win like this. Yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. <laughs> All right. Going on. So. The, the, uh, the screen shade works like a transparency. Let me go in full screen so you can see it. So how many points do you see here? And if you touch the screen, it'll change color. That's for us that are um, fantasy, fancy like that. All right, so how many points do you see? Four. Four, right? So if I bring this down, how many points do you see? Three. Three. All right, if I bring this this way, how many points do you see? Why would it do that? Because it's like a real paper, right? If you slide the paper down, then the other point is literally over here. Whereas the other point should be over there, right? If you want to bring the other point back, you slide it over and you get the other one up. If you want to do the bottom, you slide this up and you bring it up. See or no? So for the beginning teacher that, 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 that's still not very familiar with the smart board, feel free to write your content. So for example, if I'm going to do some math, if I'm going to do some math here and uh, I'm going to get a new page and I'm going to do something like, like if y plus 3 equals x, solve for y, blah, blah, blah. So we're going to know that y equals what? Oops, totally messed that up, sorry. Equals, uh, totally messed that up, sorry. Y'all are making me nervous. All right. So if we're going to do this, we're going to say x equals a minus 3. Can't write today. All right, if I cover it up, you're going to do that just like you would in the class. You would bring it here, and then you say something like, okay, so then y equals what? And so forth there. So it works the same way. So if you're the beginning teacher, just write your notes like that. It's okay to go old school in order to get ready for the new school. Does that make sense? Yes? yes? Okay. All right. Going on then. Okay. You have your tools here. You have some math. Oh, let me take a screenshot of that so you guys can see. So on your screen, you should be able to see these tools here. Okay? You should be able to see these tools here. Okay? The first one is just a bunch of cells. You probably won't use that one often, but just know it's a bunch of cells. The next one are math tools. So you have little math tools that are interactive. So how many of you guys use rulers in the class? What do you use a ruler for? The real reason you use a ruler for? Hmm? To draw straight lines, right? It's the real reason we have rulers in the class, right? So we have a ruler. This ruler can be extended without losing your scaling. Because in the olden days, if you wanted it bigger, you had to make it bigger like this. But you lost your scaling. Now you can just extend it. See or no? See. All right, but we said we like to draw straight lines. So right now my finger is just a pen. But if I put it right on the edge, I can make a straight line. See how that works? So if you like to draw lines, you can use that one for line two. Okay? All right, going on. Um, a compass. Do we have any math teachers here? Who are my math teachers? Not all of them. Not all of them? Okay. So you have the protractor here. The protractor, you move it from here. From the middle, you make it larger or smaller. From the top, you rotate it. And then you can use your... Um, 
as a curvature also, okay? And just about everybody will use the compass. So this is your compass. From the left leg, you move it. From the right leg, you open it. From the pencil, what color is my ink right now? Black, so it's black, you move it there. You can drop it over. Let's say pick a different color. Draw it over, and then there's your Venn diagram. All right, any questions so far? Are you guys good? Yes? All right, sounds good. Okay. All right, we went over the document camera. This one here with the, with the uh, magnifying glass. That one I use a lot, okay? So right now I wanted you guys to see the whole page. So when I clicked on this, it said entire page. But if I'm teaching, I don't want to do entire page. I want to do page width. Why would I want to do page width? Because you actually get more space, right? You get more space on that one. So on that one here, you can do entire page or you can do page width. I'm going to keep it as entire page. Okay, questions, comments there? No? All right, your screen, your screen capture then is right here. So the screen capture, what can you screen capture? Anything. Anything. Yeah, you can screen capture. Is it raining outside? Really? All right, sorry. Totally off a tangent there. All right. Uh, so screen capture, you can screen capture anything. You're watching me use this one here, but you can use that one to create an exact image. You can use that one to do rectangles. And again, if I go to my favorite website, in this case we were using in the morning with vocabulary.com, if I want to screen capture here, I would go to Smart Notebook. I would click on my screen capture, go back to my website, and then your screen capture is automatically open here in the bottom. You see it there? I would touch it, get back to my screen capture, screen capture whatever I want. It'll say, do you want to send it to Smart? I would say yes, send it to Smart. And then now when I go back to my lesson, there it is. Okay? Questions, comments there? Everybody good? Yes? All right. All right. All right. And then the other ones, we'll go over them in a little bit. Okay? Okay. Here we go. Um... Where are we at now with the software? Who has the software open already? Everybody's good? So you got more people there? All right, so if you have the software ready to go, you two ladies back there, how are we? Still, you got it? You're still working on it? Okay. So right now, if you're still working on the software, share with somebody that already has the software, because now we're going to start getting, we're going to start playing with it. All right, so first of all, what is this? It's your pointer, cursor, whatever you want to call it. Repeat after me. Always, always. Go back to the cursor. Always, always go back to the cursor. You're gonna, we're going to quiz you on that in a little bit, okay? The next thing is, this is your blank page. So everybody right now on their screens should have a blank page. See or no? Yes? Okay. Everybody should have a blank page. Below the cursor, you have your pens. Everybody see your pens and not click your pens. Okay? Everybody see your pens and not click your pens. All right, all eyes on me, right here. So when I click on my pens, keep an eye on this side over here. I'm gonna click on my pens, and what happens there? The options. the options open up. So you have different colors, thickness, and so forth. So you can pick the different colors, you can pick more colors, you can pick your thickness, and you can pick your transparency, which you're probably not gonna use that one much. So your thickness you will use, and then your colors, okay? Now, look at what happens here. When I click, or why don't you guys click on your pens? If you have it, click on your pens. All right. If you have it, click on your pens. Once you're there, everybody there? Once you're there, click on this pen. Click on this pen. And what do you see? You see more pens. Okay. You see more pens. So like the highlighter, the highlighter is actually one of my favorite ones because um, if you're a math teacher, you can click, you can say, for example, red, you can highlight. And then if you do, let's say green, you can highlight over and see the overlap. 
So when you're doing greater or less than or less than and greater than, you can see the overlap there. But so it's anyways, pretty cool. Anyways, going back to the new page. So here we go. So y'all talk to me, okay, on this one. What you guys find your eraser? You guys know where your eraser's at? Yes. Yep. Okay. Before we do that, your your laptops are a little bit tricky. Okay? Your laptops are a little bit tricky. So listen to me here so that you don't get confused on the next steps. If you click on a pen on your laptop, if you click on a pen on your laptop with your mouse pad, when you try to write with your finger, it's not going to work. Try it. Click on a pen with your, lap with your mouse pad and then try to write with your finger. Did it work? Yes. Yes. All right. Yeah, you have to use a mouse pad. Now. Press the pen with your finger. Okay. Press the pen with your finger and now write with your finger. Now it works, right? Yes. So your, your laptop is detecting when you use your finger and when you use your mouse pad. So if you try to use, if you click with your mouse pad, in other words, it, it works like this. This is your mouse pad. If I click, if I click with my pen, on the green, I can write with my pen, right? Because I clicked with my pen. If I try to use my finger, is it going to work? No, because I didn't click the green with my finger. Does that make sense? So that's going to come to play right now when we start creating stuff. Just because the morning group, we, we, figured, we figured that out this morning. Like, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Right? So just so we know. Okay? All right. So here we go. Everybody find your eraser? No? Nope. Find your eraser. Just by looking at it, which one do you think your eraser is at? Yeah, right below the paint bucket, right? That's going to be your eraser. Okay? That's your eraser. So now, all lies on me. Okay, all lies on me. I'm going to click the eraser, and the eraser erases this, right? Is it going to erase the pen that says pen? Is it going to erase that? Yes. Is it going to erase the pen that says calligraphy? Is it going to erase that one? Are you sure? All right. Is it going to erase um, the creative pen? Happy faces. Will it erase the happy faces? Yes, because it came out of a came out of a pen. All right. Here comes your trick question. I'm going to get my shape pen. I'm going to get my shape pen, and I'm going to say, everybody draw a circle like mine. Is it going to erase that circle? Huh? It's not erasing the circle. Why not? Because the shape pen converted that shape to an actual shape. So it's no longer ink. Does that make sense? So don't try to erase the shape because you're going to wear out the dry erase board. All right. So it's not going to do that. Um, all right. That being said. These are your pens. We're going to go over some other ones here in a little bit. Now, you have your cursor. Next to your cursor, you have your shapes. Everybody see that? Your regular, your, your regular, just your shapes. Next to your shapes, you have your regular polygons. What's a regular polygon? All the sides are the same, right? Um, and then you have lines, and then you have your eraser, you have your text box. So here's what I'm going to tell you. And the morning group didn't listen, so they struggled a little bit, all right? When you use, when you want to type text, when you want to type text, try not to click your text box. This is your text box. Try not to click your text box because then you're going to get stuck in text box mode. So just click on your cursor and let, let's say I want to type right here. I would just click on there and then just start typing. See how that works? Or just touch right there and then start typing. And it's going to type wherever you want, wherever you end up touching it. That way, when you get out of it, you're automatically on your cursor. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. All right. Going on. So, everybody get a blank page. Everybody have a blank page? Everybody get a blank page. Remember where to get the blank page from? You can get the blank page from up here or from your toolbars down here somewhere. Everybody see it? We good? All right. Everybody has a blank page. All right. Everybody go to your shapes tool. 
Everybody go to your shape stool. Find the heart. Find the heart. And create a heart on the top left corner. Find a heart and create a heart on the top left corner. Find the heart and create a heart on the top left corner. All right, so everybody should have clicked on the shapes and your heart should have came out. See or no? All right, does everybody have a heart? Hopefully, right? We're teachers. All right? Now, sorry. <laughs> now, grab that heart and move it to the bottom right corner. Grab that heart and move it to the bottom right corner. Grab that heart and move it to the bottom right corner. You did it? Okay, grab that hard and move it to the bottom right corner. Grab that hard and move it to the bottom right corner. Did everybody do it? Did everybody do it the first time? Yes. No. Right, what happened? It added another. It added, had, didn't add another heart. What didn't you do? I forgot the quick No. No. Yeah. Right, if it, if it looked like this, you weren't paying attention. What did we say? Always, always go back to your cursor. Right, always, always go back to your cursor. So you should have gone back to your cursor and brought it down. Right? Should have gone back. You got it? The first time? Second time. First time. All right. All right. All right. Now, everybody knows how to do it then, right? Everybody good? Everybody comfortable? Are you guys good? We're good. All right. What about them? We good? You got to run them all. All right. All right. Here comes your quiz then. Everybody get a blank page. Everybody get a blank page. Here comes your quiz. All right. Don't help each other. No helping this time. Wait a minute. Hold on. How did you delete? I didn't delete. What did I say? I said add a blank page. Yeah, see? See? There you go. Add a blank page. Blank page with the green plus sign. It's on top, on top over there, the green, and then right here. Okay. All right. So now, go to your shapes and draw a circle on the center of your screen. Go to the new page. Yes, new page, draw a circle in the center of your screen. And try to keep it original. Draw a circle in the center of your page. No color. No color. All right, no color. All right, everybody ready? No color. Grab, grab that circle and move it to the left of your screen. Grab that circle and move it to the left of your screen. Grab that circle and move it to the left of your screen. Did everybody do it? No. Did anybody do it the first time? Yeah, because we're tech savvy over here, right? Yeah? All right. What happened? I know for sure everybody went back to the cursor, right? Yes. yes. So why didn't you move it to the, to the, why didn't you move it the first time? You don't know that you move it the first time? No. It didn't move, it, has, it hasn't moved yet? Okay, we're still stuck, okay. All right, so this is what happened. All right, you should have drawn a circle. All right, that circle should have been somewhere in the center there. Okay, now how many of you guys have played with the hula hoop before? Yeah. How many of you can still hula hoop? Yeah. Can you really? Yeah? Okay, well don't, don't get mad at me, I'm just asking. <laughs> Alright, so when you drop the hula hoop, how do you pick it up? Pick it up from where? From the, from the actual edge, right? Have you ever picked it up from the middle? No, no the circle is empty from the middle, so you can't move it from the middle. You gotta go where? Outside. You got to go on the edge, right? The little, the little thing here is that you got to be on the edge, right? Now, everybody has their shapes, you know. Yeah. Click on the circle. Click on the circle. You're going to go to your properties tab. Which one's the properties tab? Over here, this little thing is getting in the way. Click on the circle, right on the edge. Don't kill your, don't kill your mouse pad, just touch it. Just touch the edge. Should be okay. Do it with your finger. See if you can do it with your finger. No? Let me see. All right, so everybody should look like that. 
doing? Oh, you're still, your finger's still in pen mode, so go ahead and click the cursor. Your, yeah, your finger was still in pen mode. See that? Go back to the cursor all the time. Remember I said the mouse pad is one thing, your finger is the other thing? All right. So, everybody should have the circle now. Go to your, so go so over here on my, on my right side. Everybody see this here? On your side, it may be on the left. On my side, it's the right. So now I need all eyes on me. I need all eyes on me because you're going to forget. All right, so the first one is your page tab. Everything you've created, if you click on the first tab up here, that's going to be all your pages that you've created so far. So if you save it, if you go to File, Save, all that's going to save. You're with me there. The second tab we're going to use a lot today is your gallery. What do you find in your gallery? Pictures, all kinds of stuff, yeah. The third one is an attachment tab, which we're not going to spend much time on it. The fourth one is your property tab. Click on your property tab. Now, make sure your circle is highlighted like it is on mine. Touch your circle and click on the properties tab. On the properties tab, you're going to get a no fill, solid fill, gradient fill, pattern fill, and so forth. You can even put an image in there. So we're going to do a solid fill. Everybody click on solid fill. Click. Click on the properties tab. Okay. <laughs> Alright, so I'm glad you brought that up. Alright, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. So here we go. All lies on me. All lies on me, because then you're going to ask me again, where did you get that? All lies on me. So, you had a double arrow right here. Okay, I move around a lot, so that little double arrow will move my tools back and forth. So that's why mine was on the other side and yours on the opposite side. So I'm going to go back to that side, click on those arrows, right? I was a basketball player, I was a basketball coach, I like my stuff up high. I don't like to bend down, okay? So, my stuff is always high, but if I'm teaching freshmen, they haven't hit their growth spurt. Some of them are vertically challenged. So we're going to kick the double arrow there and we're going to put it down. See how my tools are now down here. So if you have a classroom with little people in it, use that one right there. Okay? If you have taller people, use this one right here. See or no? Okay? So that's why it's on different sides. Okay? You moved that down, right? Yes. The double arrows right there next, underneath your cog. You got it? So it should just get. Double arrow stays on one side. It don't yeah. Like You're right. Okay. Well, this one, this one does move. The one does. That stays, yeah. Stays. Um, I don't know. It moves with it. Yeah, it's on here. It's on top of the bottom. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Um, lost my train of thought. All right. So we were in the, we were in the circle, right? So you clicked on your circle. We clicked on the uh, Properties tab. Everybody with me? We're going to click on Solid Fill and we're going to add white to the circle. We're going to add white to the circle. Solid Fill and then add white to the circle. Did everybody do that? Yeah. Now, right. click your circle, Properties tab, Solid Fill, add white to the circle. You good? All right, go back to your cursor. Go back to your cursor, and then move your circle from the center. Does it move? Yes. It should move. Yes. If you add it wide, it should move. Why? Because it's solid, right? Because it's solid. You might want to get a little stylus. Is that a little stylus or styli? Make it easier because our, well, like my fingers are thick, so it makes it hard. But if you have a stylus, it works a little bit better. Here, I'll let you borrow mine, but you got to give it back. I'm not going to give you stuff back, but... Don't be taking my stylus. Okay, you got that on video, she got my stylus. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take you to Judge Judy. All right, here we go. Everybody good with that? Did everybody get the white circle, move it around, and so forth there? It moves because it's no longer empty, right? Okay. Any questions before I do the actual training? Because this was just a refresher course. Yeah? It was. <laughs> 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 
Put me in, coach. Come on, let's do this. All right. All right, here we go. So this was just the very basics. These are your tabs. These are your tools. Right? You use a smart board like the way you use your computer. So it was very basic. Um, I know it's new for us, so it seems like a lot. But now I'm, now I'm going to have to pick it up a nut. Okay? So we good? Everybody good? All right. All right. Here we go. All right. Here we go. So stay with me, guys. All right? Stay with me. I'm going to open it up in the notebook file, and we're going to get to it. Okay, so a little review while that opens up. A little review while that opens up. Okay, what is this called? It's an absent projectable. What is it called? I said it earlier. Anybody remember? I know we're not supposed to touch. No, no, it's, it's, it's called an IPJ. IPJ, interactive projector. Okay, so when everybody asks, do you have a smart board? I said, no, I have an IPJ, an interactive projector. Okay, now, that's your light curtain, we're not going to touch it, okay? We're not going to touch it. You have your document camera. What two ways can you use your document camera? You can VGA or, or USB. Which one do we prefer? USB, okay? All right. Um, oh, we forgot one thing. Uh, well, you have the mic, right? The mic goes around your neck, right? So you can talk into it as a mute button. You have the power on, make sure you charge it when you leave. Um, your computers, your laptops are gonna have a docking station, okay? Docking stations are not here yet, right? But we're 85% sure that we're gonna get a docking station. Your docking station will, it's just a little black block. It's gonna sit on your desk or on your podium, right? We got podiums in the corners. We got- There's teacher desk, they're gonna have a podium delivered. Oh, so the podium's not here yet? Okay, so this wish list that we have is going to be a podium and it's going to be a docking station, okay? That docking station, we're going to put our laptop on it, okay? And there's going to be one plug you plug in and that's it, okay? All these cables that you see here, all this fancy stuff here, don't unplug it, okay? I know, we know, I know we're tech savvy and we like to pull stuff in and out because we know how to do it. Don't do it because then the installers have to come in and re redo the cabling and they charge quite a bit, okay? So I was told to tell you don't touch the cables, okay? Don't touch the cables, okay? All right. You touch the cables, hey, you break it, you buy it. You break it, you buy it. All right, here we go. So, uh, my name is Luis Morales. Um, I'm working with Houston ISD. I don't work for Houston ISD. I actually live in San Antonio. Um, so we're going to go through this here. We're going to go over the basics of the software. So what am I doing right now? Those are called what? Those are called gestures, right? Just like you do your pictures, you slide over and you slide over. Uh, you can use two fingers to rotate, two fingers to move up and down, and then you do the enlarge and minimize with the two fingers there. Okay? So we're going to today, we're going to talk about introduction and overview. Let's talk about using color animations, what's new and the um, lesson activity builder, okay? So by the time you guys leave, you will be able to do something like this, okay? Questions, comments, concerns, there. Can I start? Yes. All right, let's get to it. All right, let's say we're having a poker party, okay? And I give you guys five cards, and I give my three-year-old five cards, and I give my 65-year-old five cards. What's the first thing they're gonna do? Besides the obvious look at them. Arrange them, arrange them or put them in order, right? So the one thing to remember about, about the software is that everything is an object. In other words, it's an object-based software. What does that mean to you guys? It's an object. That means that if I write, what can I do with that line? What can I do with that line? I can move it, right? I can grab it, I can move it, I can make it larger or smaller, right? It's an object, I can flip it and rotate it. Do all that stuff. So everything is, is object-based. So going back to the cards, we said everything has its, or every, it has order, right? We gotta put them in order. So which ones would go together automatically here? What's that, you don't play poker? Wait, but if I just give you these cards, what would you put together? Three first. Three first, right? 
So yeah, so we put the threes first. So if I put the three next to that three, is that three really next to the three? No, no. what is it? It's on top of the eight and the six. So how do we get that three to go down next to the other three? No, because it would still be at the very top. Get rid of all the other cards. Get rid of all the other cards. Delete everything, right? That would be the easy way to do it. Right? Okay, so you guys are thinking that's good. But the, the way we do it is instead of doing a right click, we would just touch the object. If we touch the object, you get this green circle and you get that white circle. And what is that called right there? It's called your BFF, okay? That's called your BFF. What's the BFF? Right? So your best friend is going to be here for you, right? So if you can't find it here and you can't find it on these tabs, you're going to go into your BFF. What one of those options would I use? Order. I would use order. Right? I would say order. Do I say front, back, forward, or backwards? Where do I send it? From today. Okay. If I send it to the back, I'm going to send the three to the back. So remember when you were in elementary and you were in the lunch line and you cut the lunch line, what would your teacher say? Go to the back. Go to the back. And you, and you knew that if you, got, if you just took one step back, your teacher would get even more upset. Because when the word back, it means what? All the way back. It means all the way back, right? So which one would we use? I don't want to send it behind the key. I want it next to the three. Not front, but send backwards. Right? Is the other one? So touch it again, go to my BFF, order, and I would say send backwards. So then I bring it here, and there you go. Right? Now they're next to each other. Now that's called a what? Now it's called a pair, right? So another word for pair is a group. One thing to remember is that everything can be grouped and ungrouped. So just like in Word, if you, if you, write, a, if you write a paper, your paper has a title, right? Is your title the same size as your words? No, so how do you change the size of your title? Talk to me like a five-year-old. How, how do you do it? Make it bigger. Press the button. Well, yeah, you make it bigger, but how? What's the process to do that? Press the button. You got to highlight the word from one, from one end of the word to the other end of the word. Once that word is highlighted, then I can do what? I can bold it. I can change the size font. Does that make sense? So same difference here. I can't just click one or click the other one. I got to do what? I got to drag. See that blue marquee there? I got to drag over both of them. Once they're both highlighted, I click my BFF there, and then I choose what? Group. If the, did it group? If the word group is not, is not highlighted, then that means you didn't highlight more than one item. item. Does that make sense? Yeah? Okay. Do you have to have more than two items in order to see the order? No. Well, yeah, because you don't have anything behind it or in front of it. Just like grouping either. Grouping would be the same thing. Yes. Okay, everybody good so far? Pretty easy? Pretty easy, right? Okay. All right, here we go. A little example about grouping, okay? So as the next math teacher, let's do some more math, okay? So if I had y plus 3 equals x minus 9. Okay, I wrote it all at the same time, right? How many objects do I have? Everything is one object. Why is it one object? Because I wrote it as a sentence, right? And so the computer thinks it's, it goes together, so it's one object. But every time I lifted my hand, it's actually an independent object. See or no? So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10 objects. So if I do this as I'm teaching, and, and I know we're going to solve for y, so I say y plus 3 equals x minus 9, let's solve for y, right? Without the kids, without the kids really paying attention, I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to say, I'm going to say group and I'm going to say ungroup. See all the objects? But now I'm going to say, okay guys, let's solve for y. And come on, work with me here. Uh, something's happening to my computer. <laughs> come on, there it is. So now I can say something like, okay guys, so we're going to solve for y, so what are we going to move? 
you got to move the three, right? So, oh, but we're, we're going to move the three. So when I move it, we're going to cross the equal sign. So then I can do what? I got to get rid of the plus sign. And then now we're just going to be left with a minus three. So you see how you can break everything apart and move stuff around? Questions, comments there? So grouping and ungrouping. Yeah, your name. OK. All right. Here we go. The next one's going to be your, your little test. All right. So a little bit of lower, lower, lower level math. It says separate this number into expanded notation. What's the number? The real number. What is it? 19,135, right? So we're going to separate this number into expanded notation. What number goes first? I don't know. Nobody knows? We don't do math? No? Okay. Scientific method? No. All right, so it'd be 10,000, right? So 10,000 will go there. And then? 9,000 9, and then? And then 30 and then 5, right? So how do you do something like that? Huh? Exactly, that's what I'm asking you. How would you do something like that? We already went over the steps. How, how do we do something like that? You know how to create a shape, right? We did that already. You know how to create a shape? You know how to put color in the shape? Yeah. You know how to type? Yeah. And then you layer it. And then you layer it and then the final piece is? You group it. All right. So because we're short on time, can everybody do this part right here? Can everybody do a green rectangle with a 10,000 with a 10,000 on top? So if you have a computer, let's do the 10,000 on top. Now let's try it. Yeah, feel free to get a new page. So create your rectangle. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah, I know it. <laughs> you guys good over here? How are we doing over here? Good. You guys good? You got it down? Are you doing it? Your computer's off. Oh. Uh, yeah. Did you group it? To group. You're gonna have the green one and the, and the number together. So, how did you get that thing? What do you have? Oh, it's because you were in text box mode. That's why. Okay. So, how do you get that BFF menu? I missed that. Well, first you got to highlight the whole thing, right? So how do we highlight the whole thing? I point to it. Mm, no. Click and drag, just like you would do in Word. Yeah. You're going to highlight a sentence, you drag, you highlight the whole sentence, and then there's your BFFs. Okay. Yeah, and then there's, no, make it bigger. Me? No, her. Oh, okay. I was like, what? Give me some, nah. I'm not going <laughs> to. Wait, but I need to get my... Well, you go to your BFF. Talk to your BFF. Your BFF is at the, at the top of the drop, the drop arrow, right? Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Which one? Either one. Don't matter. Please. Yeah. Okay. And then I want to go. There you go. There you go. And then see if you can see if you can layer it. Then so do the nine thousand to six hundred and see if you can put them on top. You all right? No. No. Type it in. Type it in. Don't be cheating, type it in. <laughs> Alright, since you guys are the advanced group, see if you can do the whole thing. The 9,000 and the 600 on top. Yeah. No? What happens? Well, first create a shape. Let's create the rectangle. 
Yes. Uh huh. Uh, no, see, if you use your mouse to click it, then you gotta use your mouse to create it. Oh. So if you use your finger, click on the, with your finger, oh. click the shape, okay. and then I'll create the rectangle. Oh. There you go. Oh, okay. So now, oh. I'm gonna write in. So now you wanna type, what number do you wanna type? 10,000, you say? 10,000? Okay. Um, you gotta type it. Oh. Yeah. Okay, now, like that. Uh-huh. Now what am I supposed to do? And then your rectangle has to be green? Green. So how do you make it green? Here, right? No. No, I don't need the to. The tools, which one? Which one? Okay, so here. Allows you to paint a shape. Okay. Does that one allow you to paint a shape? Um, I don't know. So I'm going to... Which tool? Listen, look at your tools. Don't, don't, don't make it hard on yourself. Yeah, the pointer. So which tools up here allows you to put color in a shape? This one. No, that's no. your shape. So it would be the paint bucket. See the paint bucket there? Right. Here? No, on the other side you see a paint bucket? There you oh, go. There yep. So that one brings color in. So what? So now select the color. Now select the color. Right. Mm-hmm. Green. Yeah, and then drop it in. Click it. Okay. There you go. And then now we gotta group the whole thing. Oh. So go back to your cursor. And then highlight the whole thing and let's group it. So you gotta click and drag the whole thing. So right now you only have the rectangle highlighted. Mm -hmm. Right? So just like you do in Word, if you do in Word you're gonna change the sentence, what do you do? You gotta highlight the whole sentence, right? Right, right. So here, I use this? No. N no. Click on the outside. Outside. And then you click and drag all the way across. Okay. Use your finger. You're, you're, you're trying to use shortcuts. And Oops. So click on your pointer over there. All right, so now you're going to click and drag all over the shape. Out, start on the outside of the shape. No, you're clicking the shape. To get, no, you, okay, now move your hand to the left. Okay, and then now we're going to drag, no, 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 don't touch the shape. Okay. You're going to be outside the shape, okay? No, now, now you're going to highlight the whole, you're going to highlight the shape and the number at the same time. So start in the top left corner. Okay, here? Yeah, and then drag the whole shape. Drag over the shape. Uh, sort of, get, there you go, right there. And, but go the other way. No, you had it, fine, we had it, but go the other way. There you go. No, this way, this way, bring it, bring it, bring it, bring it, keep going, keep going, keep going. See how you highlight it over the shape? Okay. Right? All right, so in other words, we just have to get it here and go like this. Okay. okay. Right? And then choose one to group. So you go to one of your BFFs. One. Uh-huh. One of the drop-down boxes. Remember, what's a BFF? Mm -hmm. What's a BFF, remember? We say, which one of those is your BFF? We pointed out one of those is your BFF. You're going to use it all the time. No, ma'am. On the shapes. You go to the drop down box. There you go. And then with, we're in a group. And so which one do we do? Group. Group. That's right. Okay. And then group it. And that's it. Okay. All right. Oh, my God. Uh, no. Uh, no. No, it's okay. All right, guys, here we go. Did you guys create the shape in the 10,000 on top? Yep. All right. So how did you do it? Right? It should have just been the shapes. You get this here, you create a shape, right? What color do you want? We said green, so I picked the paint bucket. I picked the paint bucket. I should have gone with green, and I'm going to fill it in with green. Right? The next thing was what? Create my number. Now remember what I said at the beginning, if you go to text boxes, you're going to get stuck in the text box. So just click somewhere and write the number 10,000. Right? So once you write the number 10,000, it should have just been... Come on. And that's... Computer's killing me today. So we're going to say 10,000. One, two, three. And one more, right? There you go. Once it's there, click outside of it. And there's the number 10,000. Make it bigger. Put it in there. And now, how do we group something? 
I think we all struggled on the grouping part. How do we group it? You gotta highlight both the number and you gotta highlight both the rectangle. See how that works? And what did I just do with my number here? There we go. All right, so you gotta highlight both of them. So start from one side, go all the way down to the other side. Start on one side and go down to the other side until they're both highlighted. Once they're both highlighted, you're gonna go ahead and press group and you're gonna group. See or no? So this is what, well, that one didn't group. Yeah, y'all can laugh at me on that one, it's okay. <laughs> All right, so group it. And so now, it's not grouping. So group. Seriously, sorry, my touch is off. Huh. So we're gonna click group, and then we're gonna click group. Now, there it is. Huh. All right, so there's the group. All right, how do you guys feel? Is it, um, I, I can do it that way. How did you do it? But I, I, I typed the number in there, and then I highlighted the box and hit the color and it went in the box. Okay. Is that the wrong way to do it? It's not the wrong way to do it. It was still what I worked in this case. But what you did is you, you, you labeled the, the, the rectangle. It still works. It's still fine. So, um, but if we learn if we learn to group it, because what you did is you did this. You uh, let me create a, a shape here. So let's get the heart. What we did is we double clicked it, and then we typed in the heart. So you labeled the heart. So you didn't create a different object. Does that make sense? Right. So if you try to break it up, it's not going to work. Does that make sense? But after I finish, can I group it? It's already grouped because it's just one. I'm saying the way I did it, I couldn't. No, no. Um, but it, but this, in this case, it still works. Like that still works, right? Okay. All right, guys. Going on. Um, the next thing we're going to talk about is color. Okay. We're going to talk about color here. Um, when you use color, you can you can enhance your lessons by doing what they call a uh, a reveal, right? So in this case, what are the three states of matter? And if you're a science teacher, I know there's four. What are the three states of matter? Solid, liquid, gas, right? Yeah. Solid, liquid, gas. Or gas, liquid, solid, however you want to call it. Right? So then we can check it by saying, okay, solid, liquid, gas. That's good. That's correct. How do you do that? How do you create that? Oh, no, just the, the illusion of that. This illusion right there. Yeah, it's the text color, right? What do we know about the text color? White will show on a dark color, it won't show on white. Right. The white will not show on the white, but it will show on, on the gray. So when I do this one here and I put it over here, it's the white is on top or behind the gray? Top. It's on top, right? Okay. So very simple. You just get a text box and your answer that you want to hide, you match it to match your background, and then the rest is a different color. See or no? Okay. So we're going to create this one here. All right, we're going to create this one here. Okay, have you guys seen the movie Swordfish? Yes. Yeah, so the movie Swordfish is all about misdirection, right? It says what the eye see, the mind believes, right? So by playing with color, you're able to create an illusion, right? You're able to create an illusion. So for example, my four comes over and becomes 12. My seven comes over and it becomes 21. What's my six going to become? 18. Are you sure? Yeah. Yes. Right, 18. So how are you creating that effect? Yes, you're multiplying by three, but you're doing it with only two colors. Yeah. Does everybody see that? Yeah. Red and blue, only two colors. You can't see the, the blue because it's blue. The 36 is blue. You can't see the 12 because it's red. Is it really going through the tunnel? No. Are you sure? Positive, right? But you're giving that illusion, okay? So can you guys create that? Yeah, sort of kind of in a way. All right. My number's right there, 36 and 12. All right, so how do I go about creating that? Okay, it's going to be the hardest thing we do today. Take two numbers, give them uh, different colors, group those two sets of numbers. When that number moves over to the other side, since that number is red, it'll cancel out and move to the red side. Right. Except we're not going to group the numbers. You can just do one text box and then highlight the first two one color and highlight the other two a different color. That way you don't have to mess with grouping. Right? Okay. All right. So the way you would do this is you would create 
two rectangles, choose your colors, and then choose the same colors for your numbers, and then how do you create the tunnel? Uh, I mean, is it really a tunnel? No, it's a cylinder. Where would I find my cylinder? Two squares, I mean one square and a circle. Okay, but well you're getting GT on me, so where would I find an easy cylinder? You would search on your gallery tab, right? Search your gallery tab for a cylinder. Unless you want to create it, go ahead. Okay? All right, can you guys do it? Give you about 10 minutes. Can I go on? Yeah, let's go on. All right, so all lies up here. If you're still working it, that's okay. Uh, but let's get all the eyes up here. So, if I was creating this, uh, one of the things that, that, we, that we're struggling with is always going back to your BFF or to your, or to your drop down menu. All right, so that drop down menu is there, so use it. Uh, a lot of us are getting stuck because we're forgetting that we, to go to the drop down menu. So, the way I would create this here, if it was me, I would just get my rectangle, create a rectangle. Instead of trying to match the size, I would click on my rectangle. I would click on my rectangle and then go to my BFF for some reason, there we go, and I would clone it. If you clone it, you get the exact same size. See when you go to your BFF, you saw that clone feature there? And you get the exact same size. And then all I do is get my paint bucket, put some color on it, whatever color you want. Now, note to self, do not do light and light because you're going to blind the kids. Okay, after a while you're going to blind the kids. Do dark, uh, light and dark or dark and light. Okay? The next thing is I would do my text. So for example, if I'm doing Spanglish, I would do something like, like let's say house and casa. So I would say house and casa. Do I need a space in between? No, because I'm going to change colors, right? So what color is house? Well, on mine. On mine, we're going to go with blue, right? Is Miss Gloria here? Oh, yeah. Well, I didn't do the exact ones, right? There you go. And that's why I needed my dropper. No, 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 no. You got all your words. Yeah, no, I'm looking for my dropper. I had a dropper here, and they with this update, they got rid of it. It does, because your dropper lets you pick the exact color. Mm. All right, so I'm going to go with that blue. And which green was it? This one? That one? OK. So oops. So there it is. There you go. Perfect. Thanks, guys. All right. All right, so there it is. Perfect. And then you went, uh, at the very end, we said look for the cylinder. Where did you find the cylinder? Yeah. In the gallery, right? So the gallery is a little bit different. If you come up here, I want to search for the cylinder. So I would come in here and I would say cylinder. But if you press enter on your keyboard, it's not going to work. You got to press the search button. I don't know why it does that. And then you can have pictures here and there you would see the cylinder. And then bring the cylinder out, right? Now, why did I do the cylinder last? So it can be on top, right? This one's giving me trouble today. So it can be on top and automatically works there. But if you did it first, no worries. I would just get the cylinder and then set, set, come in here, go to order, and then bring it to the front, OK? If I would have done it the other way around. Now, when you're teaching, and let's say, let's say you do something like this, right? Because this file is going to stay here so you guys can have it. And you can just modify it. If it stays here, and you're doing something like this in your classroom. In high school, like I said, we got these timid kids that, are, that, that don't really come up here, don't want to participate because either they're shy or they just don't want to. But they're going to have a curiosity now to come up here and touch it and play with it. So we want to take advantage of that opportunity, right? Um, so there's times that things need to be locked. So don't forget to lock that that doesn't need to be moved. For instance, if I get this here, I don't want my kid to come up here because what's going to happen? Yeah, well, they're going to move it, and the class is going to laugh, and then your kid's going to be like, see, that's why I never go up and participate. And you just lost that opportunity, right? So you want to make sure that that's locked. So I just come to my BFF and then lock it. And then what else should be locked? 
the tunnel because you don't want the tunnel to move. So lock the tunnel. Okay? Questions, comments there? No? Okay. All right. You gonna take a five minute break? Yep, take a five minute break? Okay. Means if we're going smoother or if you guys are just a lot more advanced. <laughs> All right, so a little trick, a little trick for you guys here. Um, when you get on the smart board, remember in the beginning, I had to look for the keyboard, and then Delfino found the keyboard for me? Well, there's another way to do it. So on your desk, on your, on your computers, can y'all look at the bottom right corner, make sure that keyboard sign is there? Can y'all see that keyboard sign? It's not there? No. Okay. So that keyboard sign is very important and we want it there 24-7 so that when you get up here you don't have to look for it. It'll appear automatically. So what you're going to do is you're going to hold down the black bar here. See that black bar right there? Hold it down for about let's say three to five seconds and then when you let go you're going to get a menu that comes up. So we're going to say one, two, three, four, five and that menu comes up. See that? No, hold on to it. I have a mouth. No, that's okay. Yeah, just do it with your fingers. You hold it down for five seconds. My finger can work. Or or do the actual click. Do the actual click. I was pressing on this. Or can you right click? Yeah. Or right click on it. Just right click on it. Oh no, I'm the same way. I have a portable mouse. And then let go. Or just right click it. There it is. Yeah, right click. Or you can just right click it. Now we're gonna we're gonna click where it says show touch keyboard button. <laughs> show touch keyboard button. Everybody got it? And so when you do that, that keyboard will always appear here. Okay? That way you're not struggling when you get up here looking for the keyboard. See or no? See? Alright. Alright, going on then. Mm-hmm. All right, so some of you guys asked me where that timer was. That timer is in your gallery. So speaking of that, so in our gallery, let's all search for the timer. So go into your gallery, which is the second tab, and then on the search bar, click timer and then search. So I can show you what's in there. Okay. When you search for timer, make sure you put timer in and then you get to click on the actual search icon. On the bottom there, you're going to see where it says pictures and then you're going to see interactive multimedia. If you click on pictures, you're going to get basically just that. You're going to get a picture of a timer. It's not really interactive, right? But if you click where it says interactive and multimedia, you're going to get the actual timer that you can modify in your class. Alright, so here you can press play and then you have your timer if you go to the settings. You can change the, um, for some reason I lose touch there. You can change the settings there. Okay? Everybody got it? All right, now, I'm not too familiar with the Epson projector, but how did you get your timer? Yeah, on the very bottom. So, you know, the projector also has a timer, so if you click on here, right there. and here's, this one's this one right here? Stopwatch. Yep. That's going to be your timer and or your stopwatch. Okay? Everybody got it? So just make sure you do either count up or do a countdown. Okay, this one I didn't know because I'm not familiar with the Epson. So thank you. Okay? Any questions, comments there? Okay, we're going to go on. All right, all right. All right, so going on. We're still using color, okay? We're still using color. Actually, you know what? Let's do one more. I forgot to show you guys one pen. Have you done the text pen yet? No, right? Okay, so the text pen. So let's all get a blank page. Let's all get a blank page. And then, did I have you guys write your name on your computer? No, that was in the morning class? Yep, okay. All right, so. On, on this blank page, okay, we're going to get on the pens and we're going to click on 
the text pen. All right, so it says text on it, T-E-X-T. -E click on the text pen, that's what you're gonna do. You're gonna click on the text pen and without taking a break, you're gonna write your name. You're gonna put my name is and then put your name using the text pen on your screen, okay? So if you're gonna use your fingers, make sure you touch the text pen with your finger. Everybody got it? So go ahead and do it. With the text pen, go ahead and write my name is and then put your name on there on the screen with your fingers and then see how that works for you. When I press text in the pen, I didn't get that drop down, so I did something wrong. Use your hand, use your hand right here. So, and then uh, that's the pen right there. Okay. No, no, so now click, click on that one. Right, so it's not on this one. That tells you I'm going to use pens, okay. and this one tells you which pen do you want. Okay. See that? Okay. Oh, shit, I keep hitting that thing. Huh? Yeah. Did you get it? Text pen. It says text pen on the bottom there. Oh, right there. You passed it? Oh. Yeah. You got it? Okay, so with the text, you found it? Okay, yep. And then write your name on the screen with that text pen. So with the text pen, go ahead and write that there and see what happens. Did you use a text pen? You didn't use a text pen? It's okay. Get a new page. You know how to get a new page? All right, and then there you go. Use the text pen and see what happens. Everybody got it? All right, so everybody should look something like this, okay? I'm gonna go to the text pen and I'm gonna use red and I'm gonna write my name, oops, that's not gonna come out, is Luis. And it's probably gonna come out all messed up because I just doodled it, but my name is Lors. Right, my name is Lors. Nice to meet you too. So, there are some nice features with this text pen, right? So what I'm going to do with my text is I'm going to get Lors and I'm going to say, my name is not Lors. See how it deletes it? And then I'm going to do a little carrot key and say, my name is... Come on. Let's get rid of that. Let me erase that. It got me the wrong one here. So I'm going to say, text pen. And it should give me an input menu here. It's not doing it on mine. Come on, dude, you're killing me. This thing is killing me today. Give me one second here. If you do the carrot key, do the carrot key on your next to your there. And it should give you an input box. Mine is not working with me today. All right. So. The carrot key is not working with me today, that's okay. Did everybody, everybody see that? Did everybody do the carrot key on, your, on yours? Did it work? Yeah. It should have given you something like this. Instead of doing the carrot key, I'm going to do the circle. So I'm going to circle a word and it should allow me to replace it. Right? So circle a word and replace it. Everybody got it? So circle your name and then replace it with another name. Right? Yes, you can type it into that blue box. No, 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 write it in that blue box. Oh, write it. Yes. Let me, get a, let me get a new page. I don't know why this is giving me a hard time. All right, so my name is Luis. That should convert to text. There it is. To delete it, I did a, uh, did a line across. Did a line across. To input it, you should do a little carrot key. Uh, I don't know, it's not working with me today. Let me try it one more time. There it is. And then I could write the name there again. So that's the way it should be. All right, or I can replace it if I do a circle. First, my middle name is Carlos, so I'm going to say Carlos, and that should replace that. But what do I need now? Space. I'm going to go up and down, and that gives me a space. See how that works? So you have some editing features to do that. So what you can do is you can copy and paste text onto your board here, and then use your editing features to annotate or do whatever you got to do. 
Any questions, comments there? No? Okay. Going on. All right. So we said in the beginning that eraser erases ink, right? So what else can you do with ink? And we're going to get rid of this one here. All right. So with ink, what else we can do is we, we can um, erase ink. So for example, what year is this? 1930s. What else? What else can you tell me about that picture? New York. I'm going to erase his face. What can you tell me about his face? He's dirty. What else? He's running. He's not happy. What else? What about all the people? They're all running. So if I keep erasing, what event was this? 9-11, right? So you erase the badge, you show it, and you can see that it's 9-11. But the whole point is that I was able to cover the image with ink, right? So if I come in here and I get a pen, and then I get a thick pen, I can then cover the image with ink, and because it's ink, I can then do what? Erase it. Questions, comments there? Okay? All right. What else can you do with it? So we know that if we go to the gallery, we can find a skeleton, right? So this one was from Colombia. And then we're learning English. So in this case, you draw the lines, and then you, you create the individual labels. So there are the individual labels, and then the kids would have to label them, right? So we're going to put the skull right here because it's already towards the end of the day, right? We're going to do the upper arm. But with the eraser then, you can erase, and you can see the answers. See the answers there? So how do you cover up the answers? Right. Yeah, you would have covered them with great ink. Unfortunately, I can't find the dropper to find the exact one, so just make sure you match the exact color. Okay, any questions there? No, nope, pretty easy? Okay. All right, going on. What time are, what times are cut off? Anybody remember? Not 3 o'clock, 3.30, right? Uh-huh, it's a good one, though. <laughs> All right. Um... The square. What's one times one? One. What's what's uh, u times u? So then the area of the uh, square is one unit squared, right? So if I move this one here, you know that the square is one unit squared. Can you guesstimate the area of the rectangle? What do you think it is? Five. Anybody else? I go with five. Okay, one unit squared. Two unit squared. Three unit squares, four unit squares, and the answer would be five unit squares, right? So we added animation, right? We added animation. So how do you animate stuff? You click your object. You click your object, and then you go to your properties tab, and under it should say object animation. See that there? Questions, comments, concerns there? Okay. All right. Going on. The magic pen. So right now, go to something that you created on your on your notebook file, and then we're gonna work with the magic pen. Okay. So go to a page on your notebook file, and we're gonna work with the magic pen. Okay. So in this case, I have that image right there, and if I tell you guys, focus on their faces, uh, you're probably gonna be looking at the whole picture, right? So I'm gonna get the magic pen, and I'm gonna draw a circle. That was not the magic pen. That needs to get erased. Alright, so I'm going to click on my pens, I'm going to click up here, and I'm going to say magic pen. And now I'm going to draw a circle. What do you get? You get a spotlight, right? Okay, so anywhere on the outside I can move it, but I can spotlight different things here. So if you do a circle with the magic pen, you get your spotlight. Alright, so the magic pen has three features. That was just one. The second feature, what if we have these numbers right here? Right? What if we have these numbers right here? Right? You can't really see them, so we're going to magnify them. So I'm going to get my magic pen, and I'm going to come up here, and I'm just going to magnify. See that there? So what shape did I do? You did a rectangle with the magic pen. So your second feature in the magic pen is a magnifier. Okay? So the first one was a circle for the spotlight. The second one was a rectangle for the magnifier. 
And then we have one more. Any questions here? Are you guys trying it on yours? Yep. You can't draw a rectangle? What happened? Oh. Oh, okay. All right. Here we go. Um, the last feature that you have is you have uh, ink on the magic pen. So, for example, in your classes, what are your kids doing two minutes before the bell rings? Why do you laugh? What are your kids doing two minutes before the bell rings? Huh? Texting, putting the stuff away, doing all kinds of stuff, right? Are you leaving? You are? All right. Uh, so the magic pen, when I saw my kids already trying to get, get out of the class or text somebody or do whatever, that's when I give out the homework. And I would say, I would say homework would be, close that. I would say something like homework numbers 10 through 20 even and let's do a 20 like that. What happens to the ink? No, totally messed it up. It disappears, it fades out, right? So if they don't write it on time, they don't get the homework. Either way, um, so they knew that when I wrote the homework, they better write it down too. How can you use disappearing ink in your class? Uh, I don't know what y'all teach, so I, I don't know the examples here. Uh, but if you, again, you can draw maps, you can draw the lines, and they'll disappear. You can do a spelling, and it disappears. You got to respell it. I don't, um, just think of different ways you can use disappearing ink. Anyways, that was your magic pen. Okay. Any questions there? Where did the ink come from again? The ink came from the magic pen. And what's that? Just right. Yeah, you just write. So you just write and then choose your color and it should just disappear. But notice that when I wrote the numbers 10 through 20, if you guys saw what happened when I wrote my 20, I got a spotlight, right? Because these numbers 10 and you go like this, you're going to get a spotlight. So when I did my 10, I did it differently than I did when I did my 20. I said numbers 10 through and then I went like this, right? That little loop right there will keep it from creating a spotlight. Yeah, your name. Rectangle. Rectangle. Okay. Rectangle. So magnifier is a rectangle, spotlight is a circle. See or no? Yeah? Okay. All right. Um, page recording. Page recording. Page recording records your movement within the page. Okay? It records your movement within the page. So it's not going to record your sound. It's going to record your movement within the page. So, for example, for us math teachers that are here, I'm going to go ahead and get my stylus here, my calligraphy pen. On the fifth tab here, see that fifth tab? Your plug-in tab or your add-on tab, whatever you want to call it, your widgets. It's called Lesson Recorder. I'm going to go ahead and press on Lesson Recorder. And then it says New Recording, right? So let's say we're going to work on the quadratic formula. What's the quadratic formula? Anybody remember? It's going to be x equals what? Minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, the whole thing divided by 2 times a. Remember that one? Yeah? Mm-hmm. All right. Let's say you get something like 0 equals x squared minus 3x plus 9. What's that? You got it in your memory bank? Yeah? <laughs> All right. So, you have that there. I know that I'm going to have to reteach this. So instead of me having to rewrite the whole function again, I'm just going to record the page. So I'm going to go to my plugins. I'm going to go to my plugins and I'm going to say new recording. See how it turns red? Now it's recording. So I'm going to say, okay, so then x equals a minus a minus 3 plus or minus the square root of a minus 3 squared minus 4 times 1 times 9, the whole thing divided by 2 times 1. Did I lose anybody? Yeah. Not at all, right? So then I'm going to say start recording. So now somebody says, hey, I lost you at the beginning. Why do you have two negatives? And I'm going to say play. Stop me where you look at where you got lost. And don't say you lost me at the X. That's why she's your X, right? No, I'm just joking. <laughs> All right, so pause. 
Go and get that on video, okay? All right, so pause. See how I was able to pause it? Okay, so now I can say, okay, so this negative came from that negative, and this minus 3 is really just that minus 3 right there. You with me there? And then you come in here and you say something like, let's keep going. But see how I didn't have to redo it, everything, and we can just play it back and reteach where we think the student got lost? Now, is this the most basic way you're going to do it? Probably. Are there other, way, other things to do? Yes, if you're in special ed and you're working with students with their muscles, you can have them draw the alphabet and then they can trace the alphabet as it's going. See where I'm going with that? So there's just different ways you can use it. Um, apply it to your content. In social studies, you can draw a guy going through a map or something. I don't know. Um, all right, going on. Questions there? Now. The video recorder. So remember I told you to, to slide out the smart recorder? The smart recorder records sound. Your laptops should come with a webcam and a mic on top. Do, do they? Yes. So there should be a mic and a webcam on there. So your recorder, what we're going to do is we're going to go back to this here. And then um, this one should say play. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be playing this one, but at the same time, I'm going to get my smart recorder. See this recorder? Different than the recorder we just used. You with me there? This one has an actual record button, so I'm going to say record. Now it's officially recording my voice and the video on the screen. So if I come up here and go to, let's say, a web browser, and I say, uh, this is vocabulary.com, we're going to focus on blah, blah, blah. And then I go back to my lesson and I say, okay, we're still working on this. We're going to pause this here and we're going to talk about some other stuff. I get done recording. I press stop. It's going to convert it into a video. So it automatically goes to a WNV video. I'm going to save it onto my desktop and the title automatically goes to today's date. And then I save. Once you save it, it'll take just a few seconds to, to convert it. But the video is right there. See the video? If I double click it, it's that easy. So you're recording my voice. So there's my the voice. On the screen. So if I come up here and go to the web browser and I say, uh, this is vocabulary.com, we're going to focus on blah, blah, blah. All right, see that there? So now you can do the videos. I wouldn't record the whole class, record your sections, right? Because then it takes up a lot of space. Um, and again, depending on where you have it, if you have a web page, load it up to the web page. Um, it's a lot easier than having to email or try to send the videos out, right? You with me there? Any questions, comments, concerns there? They're in WMB files, so more than likely, if you want to load up to YouTube, you're going to have to convert it. But they have a converter, and it'll convert real easily. See you now. Okay. All right. Now let's talk about sound. Now let's talk about sound. Okay, sound, sound is mp3, do you have any English teachers here? No. no. That was a prior session. Anybody know how to read? Anybody know how to read? Somebody want to volunteer to read? No? Nobody. What's that? Read Yes, you're going to read here, but I'll tell you what to read. So, are you going to read for me? you going to be nice? you going to be nice and read for me? All right. Yes, you will be able to see it. All right, so she is going to read somewhere all the way to where it says dream. Okay? You ready? And go. No, 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 no. Read from somewhere. Sorry to cut you off. To dream. Sorry. And go. Somewhere behind us, a train whistle blew, long and low. Like a sad, sad song. A farm dog answered the train. And then a second dog joined. Thank you. Now, in the classroom, we would probably coordinate a little bit better and lower the volume and make it more, you know, put as much into that environment. Thank you for doing that. Uh, but you can see how sound can add it there. Now, she read, and I was clicking on this, so as you get more and more, would probably have two students, one reading and one clicking on the sounds, just so they can work together and collaborate that way, right? Um, but again, how do you add sound? We'll talk about that next. How else can you use sound? You can use sound for formative assessment, asking them questions to see if they get it right or wrong. So, for example, 
If I get this one here, it says it's a noun lesson, so what's a noun? And this one actually has two, so just pick one. So pay the clerk for the toy. Which one's a noun? Clerk. clerk, right? And then I'm gonna drag it down. Yep, see how I grouped the white line with the clerk? And then now I'm just gonna throw it behind the trash can to give the illusion of it's going away. They got it right, so then we say, there you go, all right? Now let's get it wrong. What's your noun? Did they get it wrong? Yes. Very, very, and I'm going to say, no, that's incorrect. I'm going to throw it away, and I'm going to say, Hello? Hello? Anybody home? Hi. <laughs> right? So anyways, um, just to get the sound, your students will participate just to, get the, just to see what's behind your sound, right? So how do you add sound? How do you add sound? You go to your best friend, click on the drop down box and it'll say sound there at the bottom. You see that? So I'm going to click on sound and then you can attach a sound to an object or you can create your own. So this morning they did your cheering song. Uh, what's your cheering song? What is it? Okay, so we're going to do that one on three. All right, ready? One, two, three. Do your cheering song. The morning group dealed it. What's your mascot? So how does it go? In the morning they did it. I don't know. They did something and it sounded really nice. Anyways, I already got I already got you guys recording that y'all don't know your own song. Well, I already deleted it, but they all got together and sang it out loud. What is it? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah. Nah, you all are killing me. All right. So. You get the sound, you get the sound, and you can do it as a corner icon or you can do it as an object. As an object, they just go touch the object. The corner icon, you get that little one. So preferably, try to do object. It's just, it's so much easier for them. So I'm going to say object and I'll say attach recording. And your principal ain't going to like it. Three. See? But anyways, it was that easy to... Oh, killing me, Sma. Killing me. All right, they did something this morning. It sounded really good, too. I wish I would have kept it. They got into it this morning. All right. All right. <laughs> they had coffee, right? That's what it was. All right. Um... But you saw how easy it was to add sound, right? So click on something, go to, go to your BFF, and then add the sound. See or no? See? All right, all right. Um, all right, so here we go. On your computers, and everybody can do this, you don't need the software, go to exchange.smarttech.com. Exchange.smarttech.com. All right, so the green up there, exchange.smarttech.com. She had a battery. Are you just taking people's computers? Yep. You're just taking. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. <laughs> All right. So exchange.smarttech.com. Okay. All right. So if we go to the exchange. <laughs> All right, so exchange at smarttech.com. That's where you can find lessons. All right, so somebody give me an example of a lesson. Be specific on your, on your objective. Anybody? Like, a like something you're going to teach. Like ranks. Ranks? Okay. Yeah, let's do ranks. All right, so if I'm doing ranks, I'm just going to come up here and I'm going to type in ranks on the search bar. So I would come in here and I would say ranks. Did I spell it right? Uh, ranking coins, addition ranking. Yeah, military ranks. Let's see. Let's see if any ROTC people have done any lessons on this. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, let's say cadet. Ranks. No. 
All right. Let's just say, let's say military ranks. There it is. Oh. Anyways, there's something there. Let's see, what is it? You got uh, military ranks. So you got Jamestown's and Plymouth Col colonies, Japanese culture, Remembrance Day. Any one of those that you like? Civil War. Let's do the Civil War. Okay. So I can click on it. I can click on it and I can, I can slide over and I can see if I like it. If I like it, then I click download and it'll download within seconds and it's done and open it and so you have a lesson already with you that you can use, right? This file will be converted to Smart Response 2, convert. All right, and so therefore you have a lesson there and again, how long did it take? It just took seconds, right? Now you can edit and modify that to meet your needs um, and go from there. See how easy that was? Okay. Um, Houston, I, Houston is very diverse, right? Houston is very diverse, so you're going to get students from all places, right? So, so um, a lot of times our parents don't speak English and they speak another language. And if you want to send an additional resource for your students or for your parents, instead of converting or translating a lesson, you don't have to do that. I can get lessons from other countries here, right? So I can say, don't search in the United States, but search, like, let's just take Spanish, for example. I can search in Argentina. I can search in, I can search in Colombia, or Colombia. I can search in Chile. Um, wherever you want to where they speak Spanish and I can get lessons from those countries and send it home versus having to translate everything. Wow, that rain is coming down hard, huh? Yeah. Man, oh man. All right. Now, everybody see that? And you can go by objective, you can go by that. So, again, the exchange is there for you, okay? The exchange is there for you. Okay, now we're going to get to the good stuff. You guys ready? What was your name? What do they call you? Yeah, well, what's your, well, what do they call you? Yeah. Huh? Colonel Thompson. Colonel Thompson? Okay, can you pick somebody for me? Just pick them. Come on up here. No, you don't need your computer. You don't need your computer. Pick somebody else to come with you. Navy guy? Did you say Navy guy? You got a little battle. See what you did? You got a little battle going. Army, Navy. Your Army, Navy. Okay. All right. This is going to be good. This is going to be good. Y'all wearing the same colors too. Look at that. All right. That's why he wants to go Navy. Yeah. He wants to go Navy. All right. So what we have here on your notebook, you have this thing called Smart Lab, the alien looking face. That's Smart Lab. So you're going to get activities from there. But these activities aren't just activities, like what we were talking about before. They, they've done what they call gamification. So they're more game-like game and more competitive, knowing that we have a Navy guy and an Army guy. That was a perfect selection, so good job on that one. So, loser does, what, 10 push-ups? You going to do something there? You can't do 10 push-ups? No. Push <laughs> what do you got? 10 I burpees? <laughs> all right, all right. So, no, but the loser, the loser has to do something. All right, here we go. All right, so here we go. So, these activities are gamified activities, okay? So, for example, in this activity, it's going to be racing cars. For every answer they get right, their car is going to go fast. If their answer is wrong, their car is going to wipe out. Okay, you with me there? So the question will come up here. They're going to answer it next to their mascot. All right? So watch this. Uh, let me make it bigger so everybody can see. Not that we're going to put you on the spot. So we're going to say start. Oops, let me get a pen. Uh, let me take it back here. Cursor, cursor, cursor. There we go. Start. All right, so we're going to come in here, full screen. We're going to say two players. All right, so pick your mascot and, your and then click the check mark. And then click the check mark. 
There you go. So now, if you get a little green button in front of you, that's your turbo. So, so like there, press your turbo. Yeah, let me get that all the way for you. There you go. Go for it. All right. So now they have to answer the question, and then the answer is on your, or on your button, okay? Don't click it up there. Which country has a very similar flag to Texas? All right. All right, so both of you wiped out. Click your turbo, click your turbo. There you go. What is the square root of 169? <laughs> click it on your click it on your red. Click it on your thing. Don't, don't let it beat you. Don't let it beat you. Ah, oh, he's already one ahead. All right, all right. There we go. All right, you are is the same as. You, I don't know, your, or your. All right. This next one's the easiest one. All right. The best NBA team is. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Who won? All right, he won. Ooh, Navy's got. Uh, yeah, man, there you go. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> oh no no all right so how do you do this okay I'm gonna show you here so how you when you're gonna go to smart lab you're gonna select the activity but it's real easy you just press on the edit feature and for some reason this corner is not working with me we're gonna press on the corner and we're gonna say edit and so all you're gonna do is put in your question and your answers and it'll generate that for you right so you put in your question Type in your answer choices, check the correct answer, and then you would go to the next question, and then you go to the next question, you go to the next question, and so forth. And then it'll be done, and so there you go. Uh, you can do the seconds, and then you press finish, but these are gamified activities, so it's more competitive with each other. Okay, so for example, let's do one from scratch. Let's do one from scratch, and then we'll maybe get out of here a little early, because I got to drive, and that doesn't look like a fun drive for me today. All right, I am going to be swimming. Woo. All right, so, so let's all get a blank page. Let's all get a blank page. Okay. All right, so let's click on the uh, Lesson Activity Builder. So we're going to go to the Lesson Activity Builder. And notice that on some of them it says Devices Required. Okay, what that means is that, what that means is that, um, Everybody can participate in, in, the, in the activity, okay? So, for example, just to do a very basic one right now, let's do the match them up. So, let's do match them up and let's do two categories. Match them up should be on the left side, I think, two down. So, Lesson Activity Builder, click on the alien looking face. What's that? Okay, so click on the alien looking face. The other one, right there. Alien looking face? Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Use your actual the clicker. Don't double click it. Oh, this. Yeah. Click, click on. There you go. Okay. No, I'm in the wrong There you go. Alien looking. Yeah. Press the actual clicker. Don't do that double tap. Double tap. Yeah. There you go. And it'll come up. All right. All right. So then close that video. You can close that video. All right, if you get that little video, just close that video, and then where you're working on, match them up. So just create your own. Create your own. I'm just going to do a very simple match them up. We're going to do, I'm just going to do English and Spanish because it's so easy. So we're going to say English and Spanish, right? 
So I'm going to say here one, I'm going to say uno, I'm going to say two, I'm going to say dos. They totally messed up that thing. Don't, don't judge my spelling. Two, we're going to say dos. Three, I'm going to say three, uh, tres. Okay, so you do your labeling there and then you press next. You can say check answers instantly or when prompted. We're just going to say instantly. I'm going to say next. Which background do you want? Which one? Dragon. The dragon. Finish and it automatically creates it for you. See how easy that was? And then you can add the sound and you can play with it there. Questions, comments there? Yeah, what did you do after you put the title to the word? What did you press after? Uh, finish on the bottom right corner, I think it says finish or something. Uh, next it was it was yes, next. It was made it out. Oh, because you haven't done any list. Ah. Okay, what's that? Yeah, you can click the sound up here, the sound bar. All right, all right, here we go. Get a blank page, get a blank page, and then go ahead and click click on Smart Lab again. And then, yeah, get a new page. And then we're going to click on devices required. So we're going to click on, everybody click on devices required, shout it out. See where it says sign in? Okay. Log in with your Gmail account. And I'm sorry, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be right back. Give me two minutes, guys. with your Gmail account? I think your Houston ISD email should be a Gmail account. You have a Gmail? Huh? Your Houston ISD should be a Gmail. Okay. What, try it? Try. Yeah, try. What's that? Oh, it doesn't matter. They can, they can send out. Okay, so did everybody get that? Were you able to use your Houston ISD account? That should be a Gmail account. No, that's Microsoft. Your, yours are, are, are. Our school uh, account is, is uh, Microsoft. Is it? That's fine. If you use your personal, that's fine too. I was just saying that your Houston ISD is a Gmail account, so that works too. But if you have a personal one, just do that one. Um, in this case, let me just do this one right quick. Um, <laughs> All right, so she has the cookies disabled, so <coughs> did it work for you guys? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, this one is not letting me do it because her cookies are disabled, so I don't want to mess with her computer. But um, did it work on yours, Colonel? No, it didn't work. Did it work? Can I borrow your computer? Would you mind? Thank you. So I'm going to use her computer because I don't want to mess with their settings. So I'm going to use their...
All right. That I, I was totally doing yours. All right. So here we go. So we're doing shout it out here, okay? So watch, all lies on me. And I'm using her computer, okay? So we're doing shout it out. In this case, we're gonna say shout it out. We're just gonna say randomize. We're gonna say randomize. You can send in text messages or you can send in images. Uh, you're gonna get up to three responses. And then student names we're gonna show for now. And I'm gonna click finish. So what we're doing here, the shout it out just means everybody can participate. So what it'll do, it's gonna generate a URL. So everybody go to classlab.com. So open up a browser and go to classlab.com and it'll always tell you here where to go. Um, or go to hellosmart.com, that's new. So hellosmart.com, go to hellosmart.com and then put in that, put in that number. So hellosmart.com and then put in that number. It's going to ask you for your name. You can make up a name. It's okay. And then once you log in, I'm going to start seeing who's connected here. Yes, use this here. So go to hellosmart. Using your own number? <laughs> so go to hellosmart.com and then use this number so you can see how we got some people here. Casper, Coffee. You got it? All right. So we got a lot of people, we got a lot of people logged in. For the sake of time, I'm just going to go on. So I'm going to go ahead and close this here. And so I'm going to ask you guys, is, is, um, um, what's the best part of teaching? Okay, what's the best part of, of teaching for you? Summer. Everybody say summer. Everybody says lunch. Holiday. Go ahead. What's the best part of teaching? No, put, it on your, put it on your computer. Oh. Put it on your computer. Don't tell me. Put it on your computer. All right, and then I'm gonna get started. Thank you. I'm gonna press start. So now on your side, you're gonna see your available responses that you have up to three. So do one, submit, do another, submit, and then do a third and submit. Everybody got it? Sorry, my phone's going off the hook here. All right. Cafeteria food, really? 4 p.m. Awesome. All right. Now, notice I have I have the uh, kind of three three letters of your name. You can say display names. Take it off. So I can take that off, and then all you're gonna see is the symbols. Hopefully, and that didn't work. All right. I'm gonna close that here. All right. Once they do it up here, you can move them around. You can start playing with them. Spring break, watching kids learn. Summer drama and <laughs> drama. Uh, Christmas break, cafeteria food. Summer lunch, evening. Summer lunch, evening. All right. Changing students' perceptions. So, anyways, you get the point. Everybody can participate. Okay. But all you had to do when it where it says devices required, there's gonna be that process. Any questions, comments, or concerns there? Nope. You guys are good. All right, that is pretty much all I got here, guys. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't get what you, what did you, did you actually type in the question? No, I didn't type in a question. I asked you the question. Oh, okay. okay, I asked you the question, yes. This is shouted out, so it's basically, I mean, you could, you could do it, and then you can type your question up there, right. but I didn't put a question in the activity. The other one? Yeah, the other one was different. So you just follow the prompts, and it'll, it'll, it'll do it, okay? Anybody else? Any questions, comments, concerns? Again, you're gonna get you're gonna get a box or a bag with your two stylus, your remote, your microphone. Okay. So again, the whole goal here is just to get you. You don't have to be creating lessons just yet, but the whole goal is to get you to start using the system interactively. All right. So when you're using, oh, did I just close all your stuff? I thought it was my computer. I am so sorry. Did I just? Okay. Did I close your lesson? And you had everything? Are you sure? I'm so sorry. I thought I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, my bad. Um, 
So anyways, uh, start using it interactively. Uh, let me take this away before I mess up her computer some more. Um, so here you go. Sorry if I just, I don't know if you were planning on saving the notebook file or anything. Uh, thank you. So again, you have your two stylus, you have your microphone, you have your document camera. Um, your dock is coming. Other than that, guys, thanks, thanks for coming. I uh, appreciate it. I know I gave you a lot, but thanks. Okay? Y'all be careful with that rain. Thank you. I'm gonna...